Welcome! So this is Sydney Cumbie for Delium Tools. We're going to be doing a special effects and beauty transformation uh, with makeup artist Jacqueline Kuhn, myself, Sydney Cumbie, and model Yvonne Drovic. And of course, this is an Ursula-inspired makeup. So let's get to it. All right, so first up, we're going to be prepping the skin with witch hazel and a white latex sponge. So just in case your model has any kind of oils or lotions on the skin, you always want to clean the skin, uh, especially if you're going to be gluing anything on the skin. Um, so what we're doing here is just we're trying to remove any excess oils or anything like that, just with witch hazel and a sponge. And also we're going to want to clean behind his ears as well, because we do have to glue down his ears in just a bit. And that's just what we're doing right here. And there we are, cleaning behind his ears. Nice. So now we're going to be pinning back the ears. We're going to be using the Delium Tool 7-piece glue set, the Westmore silicone adhesive, and Omsite translucent adhesive film. So we're going to be pinning back the ears so that the cowl fits evenly uh, over his head and nothing's bulging out. So what I'm doing right here is I am gluing down some of the hair behind his ear as well as putting the adhesive right behind his ear so that we can glue it back. This is why we cleaned behind his ear so that we can glue his ears back. And I'm using the 124 small square glue brush right here just because it's perfect size to fit behind the ear and it's perfect size for what I want to use it for. So right here we're pinning back his ears, we're just laying them down and the adhesive usually is good enough but I like to go a little bit overboard and put Opsite. Opsite is this uh, like a medical tape over his ear and pin it back just so that nothing pops up throughout the day. Like say, say if he's sweating or something and, it, and the glue comes loose, at least the Opsite's gonna hold his ear down. And we want, the, we want it the, to hold it down because if an ear pops up, then it'll be lopsided up under the cowl. Then you'll see a big bulge on one side and not on the other. And if both pop up, then it's just gonna be a wider head. So it's just easier to pin his ear, pin the ears back and just do it with medical tape and adhesive just to make sure it stays. And you can also use medical tape, just regular medical tape if you need to. So now we're gonna be applying the bald cap. We're gonna be using the Delium Tool 7-piece glue set, Nigel's latex bald cap, Westmore silicone adhesive, and some small scissors to trim away the excess. Now this bald cap is not gonna look perfect because it's going under a cowl, so it's fine. All right, so what he's doing right here, he's doing what we call bull horns. He's gonna hook his fingers into the bald cap and pull it over his forehead for us like a great model he is. All right, so this bald cap is a latex bald cap and it is not vinyl, so it's not gonna blend away. So we're gonna have to cut it with scissors. All right, so if we got it placed, we got it where we want it, we're gonna peel it back, we're gonna start adding adhesive. So we are using the Westmore adhesive, and I'm gonna be using, oh, it looks like we're both using the 124 uh, small square glue brush. It's just a really great glue brush for smaller areas. And so we're gonna apply it on his forehead and then apply it into a sideburns right there, just to lay down his sideburns just a little bit so the bald cap sticks and stays a little bit better. Now this bald cap isn't meant to look perfect. It's not gonna look like he's bald, it's just gonna mainly be a barrier between his hair and the cowl. So we laid some adhesive down, we let it dry a little bit and then we pulled it down. If you don't let the adhesive dry, it will not dry up under this bald cap because this is a, it's a solid latex ball cap so it's not gonna dry up underneath it unless you let, let it dry a little bit and then you can lay down on top of it. So now we're just going around and we're laying down spots. We're laying it over his ears because his ears aren't gonna be used in this makeup. And we wanna use that little bit extra bald cap to lock down his ears and make sure his ears stay down. And so right here, I'm just trimming away the excess uh, bald cap so that we have more face uh, real estate to work with because this cowl sort of has like a forehead and cheeks attached. So we want as much open skin as possible to glue down the cowl and cheeks to. So I trim down as much as I can, as much as I want. That's a lot of real estate to glue down the forehead piece on. So I think we're fine. And so right here, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm cutting a hole for his ear. The reason I'm doing this is because it gets really muffled under all these layers. So you'll have a bald cap, you have a cowl, sometimes you have an ear. And I want him to be able to hear at least a little bit. So I, I'd like to trim out a little hole in the bald cap just to help him hear a little bit underneath. So now what I'm doing right here is I'm just laying down the little edges with the 129 multi-purpose bent glue brush. Really great glue brush for, for sliding up under ball caps and edges. It's really great. 
and as you can see they're just laying down so easy and it's just blending really well. All right, now after everything is glued down, I know the edges are gonna have a little bit of adhesive, you wanna powder it. We're powdering it with the 173 Stomper Brush because it not only is it gonna powder, but it's gonna put a lot of pressure. And before you put the cowl on, you wanna make sure everything is powdered so that nothing sticks to the cowl. Looking good. And now we apply the cowl. We're gonna be using the Delium Tool seven piece glue brush set. Westmore silicone adhesive and, of course, an RBFX cowl. So this is not a monster cowl, this is just a character cowl, so you'll see. All right, so first up, okay, you usually wouldn't have to do this with just a cowl, but we have to lay down his brows because this cowl has like a forehead piece attached to it. It's a little bit different than what you would usually do because you'd usually do a cowl and then put a forehead piece over it. But this one has a forehead piece attached and you'll see in just a bit. But we're laying down the brow so we can get the hair out of the way. And nice and flat. We want a flat surface to be able to glue the brow on as well as we want the hair out of the way. We're both using the 124 uh, small square glue brush because it's just a good all around glue brush for smaller areas like this. And now, of course, we're powdering and adding pressure with the 173 Stomper Brush. And that's all RCMA translucent powder, by the way, if you guys wanted to know. This is just translucent powder. Any powder would do. All right, just testing, make sure it's not tacky. It's all down. So now we can apply the cowl. So here comes the cowl. We are going to put a little bit of powder on the inside. We're putting powder on the inside so it slides over his head a little bit better. Don't put too much powder because you still have to glue this down and powder will act as a barrier. So what he's going to do is he's going to slide his hands up to his ears and he's going to put his hands into the cowl and then spread it open just a little bit and pull it down. Now what he wants to be aware of is pulling too hard or opening too much because this is foam latex and it can rip. And just like those thin edges up there, if we pull it down wrong, it could rip an edge open. Then we'd have to fix it. It wouldn't be fine. I would. All right, now we got it placed. And we're rolling some, some edges over that got stuck. And generally with something like this, usually it doesn't have a face attached, but this one has a face attached. So it's, we're, we're going to work with it a little bit different. Usually what I would do is I would work from the center and work my way out. But I'm going to lock it around this, uh, his right eye first. And I'm using the 129 uh, multi-purpose uh, bit glue brush so I can get up in those small areas and reach up in there really far. It's a nice bent glue brush and it actually holds a lot of adhesive too. That's what I like about it. So I'm going to lock it around this eye first just to get it positioned uh, where I want it. And then I'm going to have Jackie do the other eye to match what I did on this side. And so I went all up in there in the forehead area with adhesive. I let it dry a little bit, and now I'm just tacking it down uh, around his eye, laying it down. And now Jackie's uh, going to work on that other eye, so she's going to get up in there. She's using that 124 uh, square glue brush, which we've been using a lot in this makeup, because again, it's you know it's a small, little bit smaller area that we're working with right there. It's a tight area, so you don't want too much adhesive. So she's locking it in right nice and matching it with me. And now you can see there's a wrinkle right in the middle of the forehead. Usually that's locked down first, but I'm going to reach up in there with this little small bent uh, 129 glue brush. You see how it just fits up in there so well and you can go so far with it because it's a nice slim uh, and small glue brush. And then I just sort of tap it down, tap it down, tap it down, and it locks it down really nice. All right, so now we're just going to go at it. So I'm going to work on one side, she's going to work on the other, and we're just going to copy what we're, we're doing um, and make sure everything matches up, make sure everything is uh, symmetrical. So what I'm doing right here is I'm just reaching up in there with that 124 uh, square glue brush, and I'm just adding adhesive anywhere I can. I'm not necessarily going that far back to the bald cap, because if, even if it's glued to the ball cap, it'll still move because the ball cap will move. So I'm just making sure I get all of his skin up underneath it. So any, anywhere that I see skin up under there, I'm adding adhesive to. And because his head's a little bit bigger than what this was sculpted on, we have to stretch the foam a little bit to match that where that little curve of the nose goes. So we did have to stretch it a little bit, but as long as you, as long as you don't stretch it too hard, you're good. 
Uh, Foam Latex does have a, a, a nice uh, flexibility, but there also is a limit to how far you can stretch it. So now what I'm doing is I'm going over the edges right now. I'm just laying down the edges. I'm propping up little places where, that need to be glued down, pulling them back. As you can see Jackie right there sort of pulling back on top of the prosthetic, and it opens up an edge. You can slide that glue brush right up in there. It's really nice. And I'm just tapping pieces down that I glued down. And now if I want to glue down edges, here's a little trick. What you want, so I have this little thin glue brush right now, the 129, and I have a little bit of alcohol and a little bit of adhesive, and I'm just tapping over the edges. Foam latex is a sponge, so that alcohol and adhesive is just going to absorb right through the sponge and lock itself down. Now you can't do this to a really thick piece, it has to be just edges if you want to lay down edges, and it will just absorb right through and lay down that edge so quick, as long as it's a pretty thin edge. And you can see those edges are just going right down with just me using that little bit of alcohol and a little bit of adhesive. Now we're back at uh, locking this thing down. So we are using a lot of pressure uh, with this 173 stomper. So you want to press it down to see how I'm doing it with my finger just to make sure that everything is locked down and it's looking good. Looks like everything's on there. Nice. Time to apply the lips and forehead. So we're going to be using, of course, the glue brushes once again, uh, Westmore silicone adhesive, again, RBFX lips and brow piece, as well as some zinc oxide. Alrighty, so we are using the 173 stomper brush right there, which does come in the seven piece glue brush set. And we are applying the zinc oxide around his nose and around his lips. Because the enemy of any prosthetic is heat and moisture, the zinc oxide is going to help it dry out a little bit and keep that on the skin. So right now I'm using that 129 glue brush and I'm adding a little bit to his lip. So a little bit to the center of the lip right there. I'm keeping the, the far edges not glued and then I'm just going to center it up and place it where I want it. Now don't be afraid, once you set this prosthetic down, don't be afraid to pull it back up. If you don't think it's gonna, if, it, if it's in the wrong position, just pull it up slowly or use a little bit of 99% alcohol and, and work it away and then pull it back and then place it. The, the worst thing in the world is, is to put a prosthetic down and you're done with the makeup and it's crooked or weird and it doesn't look right. So make sure you just lay it down proper and you get it positioned the way you wanna get it positioned. So of course what we're doing right now, we're both using that 129 uh, glue brush and we're just working our way up under the prosthetic. You see how that brush slides up under the prosthetic so easily. Nice small brush, picks up enough adhesive and you can just slide it up under the edge pretty much anywhere you need to. Definitely one of my all time favorite glue brushes. So we got it powdered right here. We want to powder his lip. You want to also tell your model when you're working around the lips, Keep your mouth open. If you close your mouth, you're going to glue your lips together and then it's going to be a mess and then we got to fix it. So we powdered it with that uh, 173 stomper brush and now we are going with the top lip. So we're just going to lay it down, place it. It almost fits him really well. Like these prosthetics fit him pretty decently. So it's not too, we don't have to stretch too far. We don't have to move it too far. Again, we're using the 129 uh, multi-purpose vent glue brush. It's so easy. It, it just, it's just a great brush. I don't know what to say about it. And of course, it's all down. Went down pretty easy, went down well, and now we're powdering it. Again, this is the RCMA powder, translucent powder. You can use uh, really any powder that you want to. All right, so now, like I said, you usually want to start from the center and work your way out. So that's what I'm doing right here because we're going to put a brow piece on top of this brow piece already just to give them a little bit more evil look because we almost want this to be cartoony, but car almost like cartoony realistic. I don't know. I don't I guess, I guess that's what you want to call it. But uh, we start from the middle. So I'm going to work over here on uh, this left side and lay it down around the eye. And then I'm going to get Jackie to just copy my placement because I want to figure out where this is going to lay over here. And we don't want to do it at the same time because if we do it at the same time, we could place it uh, higher or lower than, than each other. So if I just lock this side down, Jackie will be able to go in there and just copy my placement super easy. All right, I got it placed. And now Jackie's going in right here. She's going in with that 124. Uh, glue brush again because it's a great glue brush. It's perfect for smaller areas like that. 
and she's getting locked down. It's looking pretty good. And it looks like Yvonne's falling asleep right there. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, all right, here we go. Now we got it laid down. We have all the edges down. Of course, like I said, the edges, if you want to lay them down, stipple a little bit of adhesive and a little bit of 99 over it, and it'll lay down perfectly. All right, nice. Blending prosthetics. So we're going to be using the Delium Tools SFX Locking Tweezers, some Prosade, a wax paper palette, and an orange stipple sponge. So this is just a little, little tip of how to blend prosthetics better because I know some people ask me like, oh, how do you get perfect edges? Look, RBFX prosthetics already have really good edges, but to let, really lock all of this down and to blend it really well, you just wanna stipple a little bit of Prosade over any kind of edges you have, and that'll help blend it into the prosthetic. The Prosade will uh, mostly evaporate, so it'll, it'll stipple a texture on there, but it'll also really lock it down and be very you know minimal texture so you won't notice it too much so what we're doing right here with the locking tweezers is we're just getting a little bit of prosade on there and stippling over all of the edges any kind of edges there are we're stippling over any kind of trouble areas we think we might have we're just going to stipple over and Jackie's using a little bit of air from an airbrush right here to dry it you can use just the sponge in your fingers but you might get a little bit of prosade on your fingers so we use the tweezers because the twinger, tweezers are so convenient. And of course, powder, powder, powder. If he makes a face right now with all that prosade on him, something might fold, something might crease, and it might, it, we, we might have to fix something. So we want to powder it as soon as the prosade dries. And of course, we're powdering with the 174, 174, the 173 Stomper brush. So up next, we're painting with packs. So we're gonna be using the Delium Tools 197, 195, and 193, as well as the 175 effects brushes. And we'll be using the male products, Mauve, TH3, Ivory, a wax paper palette, and a water cup. You wanna have a water cup on hand because you're gonna be using packs in your brush. After you, you're done with that brush, put it in a water cup just so that the packs doesn't dry. It just makes it easier to clean out. All right, as you can see here, we are both using the 195 stipple brush and we're just brushing a mauve color on. So this color is just a, a pink color that's gonna act as like a blood color underneath the skin. Um, and so we're, we're going kind of thin with it too. We're not trying to go thick. I'm trying to make it really thin. So if you see some of the prosthetic underneath, that's fine. It doesn't have to be too harsh. And so we're, we're barely going over the edges with it too. I don't like to put too much packs on the skin because it, it wrinkles and it gives a weird texture. All right, so now we're going in with a little bit smaller brushes to get some of those details right there. And so I'm using a, a 193 stipple brush and she's using the 175 effects brush. So now we're going in with the TH3 color by Mel Products. TH3 is almost like a tan tone a little bit, like a natural tone, uh, not too orange, not too dark. And we're using that 197 stipple brush, all over stippling brush. And we're gonna do a nice stipple coverage. We want it splotchy. We want it to look like realistic skin. So we're not brushing it on, we're stippling. We wanna see some of that pink underneath the skin. The more, you know, the more you see, the more like translucent it is, the more realistic it'll look like flesh. So we want to see some of this, uh, uh, some of this pink underneath. We're building up layers here. Stipple, stipple, stipple. I think. Uh, so she's using the 195 now, and I'm using the 197 all over stipple. All right. So now Jackie's actually going in with the dry brush method using the ivory color. So now we want this makeup to be kind of pale. You know, uh, look, it's Ursula. We want her to be pale. Uh, well, a uh, humanoid Ursula. So we want it to be kind of pale. So we're, now we're gonna go in with an ivory and we're gonna sort of pale it out a little bit, but still using the same techniques. Jackie might be doing a little bit more of a dry brush where she hits the high points of the brow in certain areas, but I'm still going in with that stipply color to make it look like flesh. You wanna build up colors, you wanna build up stipple layers to make it look more like flesh. And if anything's too harsh or whatever, we're gonna fix it with a spatter layer, splatter layer. So we're gonna we're gonna blend it all with a splatter layer in a bit. 
Now it's time for splatter layers. So we're gonna be using the Delium Tools 108 and the Delium Tools 110 splatter brushes. Uh, central pneumatic, gravity feed airbrush, uh, spray gun basically, a compressor, and PPI scale and illustrator colors, natural one, rice paper, espresso one, and some 99% alcohol. So let's do it. <laughs> So what we're doing here, what are splatter layers? So we're gonna be, splatter layers are just spots. You wanna add little dots everywhere and it's, the colors that we're using are very similar similar to the PAX colors that were used, but we're gonna blend everything together now. So the splatter layers are gonna really blend everything and make it look more natural, more like skin. If you look at your skin, you'll see all these like little dots that come together. And I'm using right here, I'm just gonna be using the 108 precision splatter brush because I want to get it into areas that I know I need to, to hide skin, to, to blend things. And I'm going to be using that. So I'm going to use the natural one is the first color that I used, which is sort of similar to the TH3 PAX color that I used. And this is all Skin Illustrator airbrush colors, but I'm spattering it on with a brush. And she's using an airbrush to do it. So we're using a couple of different colors. So we used the natural, the rice paper, and now I'm going in with some freckles. So I'm using my 108 brush to spatter some freckles because I, I, I want, of course, this character to have freckles, but I also want to make it look more realistic because everybody has a couple of spots, but I want to make her have a little bit more spots. Um, and I'm doing it with this little brush and Jackie is actually going over doing the same thing with an eye water airbrush That's not you don't not necessarily you don't really need it, but she's doing it I'm just using a little brush so you can see all those freckles that are there. It makes it look way more natural All right adding sheen and sealer using final seal by bin nye And so this is just sealing it, right? So you're just gonna seal it with a bin nye sealer The reason I like the bin nye sealer because it does add a little bit of sheen to the makeup it gives it almost a more of a translucent look and that's what I'm doing here and I usually just do maybe two layers of it and that's it and then we also if it gets too heavy we usually dry it with an airbrush that's what Jackie's doing right there drying it off with an airbrush and that's that time for foundation and contour so we're gonna be using the face atelier foundation cine cream blush eye water airbrush and compressor and of course a couple of these delium tool brushes that you see below Alrighty, so we don't really want this thing to look too drag-like. We don't want to make it caked on makeup because that hides all the effects makeup that we did, right? We don't want to cover that up too much. We still want to see the freckles. We still want to see the, the skin tone underneath. So she's going to be going in light with this Iowata airbrush and the Face Atelier foundation. So it is relatively light. You can still see the freckles underneath. So now she's uh, setting the eyes right there with a little bit of RCMA powder. And that's all the foundation that she's going to do on this. And she's going to brush it away with the 186 effects brush. So this is a watercolor brush. We just use it to wipe away a little bit of powder. And again, whatever you, whatever, whichever brush works for you, that's the brush you want to use, right? And that's what she did there. <laughs> So now she's going in with a little bit of contour. Again, don't want to make it too drag-like. So she's going in very light. I know it all looks, it kind of looks like it's really heavy makeup, but it is actually relatively light. You can still see the freckles up close underneath that makeup. So she's going in just with the darker face atelier foundation, just on the cheeks, just to give it a little bit of shape. She's shaping that face right there. And now she's going to shape the nose, just add a, a little bit of contour to the nose. And she's going to be using the 775 Golden Triangle Shader Brush. Just a little bit of that foundation on the nose. And she's going to blend it out with the 788 Golden Triangle BDHD Brush, one of our top sellers. You can use it for a, as a concealer brush, a blender brush, an eye brush. There's really so much you can do with this BDHD 788 Golden Triangle Brush. And I think it's about time for some blush. Yeah, there she goes. She's actually using one of our newer brushes right here. That is the 952 Double Dome Blender Brush. And she's using the Cinna Blush, the Cinna Cream Blush. Beautiful. Again, going very light, not going too heavy with it, you know? Not 
All right, now it's time to apply the eye makeup. We're gonna be using the Bid Eye Ultimate Effects Palettes, the Bid Eye Rainbow Palettes, Mel Products Pigment Powders, the Iridescent Blue, Blue Pearl, and White Gray, as well as uh, a list of Delium Tools brushes, mostly Golden Triangle. All right, so we have the eyes in. So these lenses are from 9mm SFX, and they are like the medium gray lenses. All right, so Jackie has the 937 concealer brush right there. And she's applying a cream color to the eye just to add a base. So she wants to put a base down uh, of cream before she puts any other pigments on top of it. So this is basically priming the eyes. And she's using a, a cream color from the Ultimate Effects palette. This is a cream color that she makes, so it's a custom color that she makes out of a couple different colors from the palette. Um, she wanted this sort of sea foam green blue color just as a base. All right, doing the other eye. And she's just following the brow. So the shape of the brow, just following it. It's an evil brow. We want to enhance that evil brows. Alrighty, now she's going to be softening, feathering out the edge of this eye with the 788 Golden Triangle BDHD brush. Another one of our best selling brushes. Uh, you can use it for multiple purposes, concealer, eyes, blending. It's just a great brush. And she's going to feather out this side as well. Boom, yeah. All right, so now she's gonna be highlighting the eye right here with some uh, Mel Products pigment powders. And so this is the iridescent blue that she's highlighting the eye with. And she will be using the 774 uh, large shader brush. All right, so now she's going in with the 777 uh, shadow brush using a uh, blue color from the Rainbow Bin Nye Rainbow Palette. And now she's just smudging a little bit of that blue right up under the eye using the 772 small shader brush. Just a smudge. Now this one is going to be the 780 Golden Triangle Pencil Brush. And she's just using a little bit of an iridescent color to highlight the inner eye, to brighten the eye up a little bit. All right, so we're back at it again with that 937 concealer brush. Just adding a little bit of gray white up top as a base to add some of the uh, gray white uh, melt products pigments. All right, so here's the pigment powder that she's using up top. And this is the gray white. I think this is gray white, pretty sure. White gray. It's the white gray. <laughs> All right, so now she's using the 780, once again, the pencil brush, just to contour the eye, to shape the eye, really. And she's using like a, a, a black blue, so uh, going in with a black and then going uh, over with a blue. And these are all from the rainbow palette, for the Bin Eye rainbow palette. She's gotten the, the shape of the eye down and blending it out with the 772 small shader brush just to blend out that, that harsh that har harsh contour. Alrighty, so now we're moving on to the brow. So we're going to be doing a black cream brow from the Ultimate Effects palette. And she's using the 762 small angle brush. Just drawing on a brow. And it's really cartoony. I mean, this makeup is sort of cartoony. It's almost, it is kind of drag-like. But, uh, you know, there's so much effects and the brow is is sort of creature-like as well. All right, that nice brow going on there. So cartoony, but it's looking pretty good. All right, next up, applying the lip. 
We're going to be using the Delium Tools 540 Lip Brush as well as the Delium Tools Scarlet O Lip. It's pretty much self-explanatory. She's actually using the 540 Travel, the Studio Travel Lip Brush. It's a little bit smaller. She likes the shape of, of this smaller brush. That's why she's using it. This brush also does come in the regular studio size, but this one is just a little bit smaller so that you can travel with it and it's easier to pack your kit. And the good thing about this, the Delium Tools lips, they really do stay and we actually, after this whole makeup, we went out to, out to dinner with him like this. Um, uh, and the lip stayed the rest of the night, so it was pretty nice. Precision, look at that. Yeah, this is a really nice shape brush for a lip. All right, and this is the final look. What do you guys think? It's pretty fun makeup, huh? Hey, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you got something out of this video. Special thanks to Ivan Jerovic right here for setting it for this makeup. I know it takes a long time, and he's a champion. Also want to thank Jacqueline Kuhn for doing most of everything in this makeup. She did a wonderful job, so a round of applause for both these guys. And we'll catch you guys later from Delium Tools. We're out.